Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got something really cool to show you guys, which is running Proxmox 8.1 on our Raspberry Pi 5. So let's get started. Now it's only been a couple of days since UEFI boot has been working on the Raspberry Pi 5, which leads to a lot of open doors because with UEFI boot, I'm now able to install stuff that are from ISOs like Fedora or any other Linux operating system like Proxmox 8.1. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to install it on our Raspberry Pi 5, which also works on our Raspberry Pi 4, given that you use the proper UEFI boot image. Now we all know that Raspberry Pi 5 is double the speed of Raspberry Pi 4. So it's gonna run this amazingly well. And if you've been following my Proxmox playlist, I did a lot of installing on our Proxmox setup with only eight gigs of RAM, which is similar to what we have over here. So if you wanna minimize your setup even more, you could try to run this on your Raspberry Pi 5. Now, with that being said, uh, there are still some things are not working on the UEFI boot for Raspberry Pi 5, mainly the ethernet. So you do need to provide your own ethernet adapter. Otherwise, I think everything seems to be okay. Now, again, because UEFI now is available for the Raspberry Pi 5. I could also do a Windows 11 install later down the road. But for now, we're just gonna install Proxmox. So let's jump into it. All right, so here's the GitHub project for the UEFI for Raspberry Pi 5. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see this is very familiar. It's only been a couple of days old. And if I head down just a little bit, it'll tell me the status of what's going on. So we do have Raspberry Pi USB working. Ethernet is not working. GPIO is not working. PWM is not working and the PCIe is not working. Other than that, everything else does work and uh, not the EPROM. But you can install Windows 11, Linux, FreeBS, uh, VMware Fling, which is really cool. Uh, something I might want to test in the future. And a few other things that you want like Proxmox. Now heading down a little bit, you could see if you want to build it yourself, you can. Otherwise, I am just gonna grab the releases, which is right over here. So I'm gonna grab the release download this which i already have it downloaded so you can see that's number two and we're going to need a couple of things now next we're also going to need the proxmox iso and this is the github where you can get it called the proxmox port it's only a couple of months old and it does have 8.1 and there are a few things that you can use now they did test this on rock pi raspberry pi a few others, which is really cool. So even on the Vision 5, I could actually put this on my um, RISC-64 board. Now scrolling down a little bit, it shows you the regular Proxmox screens, but you want this, mirrors.apqa.cn Proxmox ISOs. And from here, you can actually download the ISO that you want. So you could go from 6.4, 7.0, all the way to 8.1 if you wanted to. And that's the ISO that we're gonna be using, which all, we're also gonna to need to use Etcher to burn it onto a USB. So now, talking about the hardware that we need. First, what I have is the Raspberry Pi 5. Again, you could do this on the Raspberry Pi 4. And I believe on Raspberry Pi 4, Ethernet does work, so you don't have to worry about getting an extra Ethernet adapter. Next, we have a USB, Ethernet. Then I have my SSD where I'm gonna install all my stuff on. A USB for the Proxmox ISO. And then a little SD card right over here, which for me, it's only a four gig. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be able to hold the boot files for the UFI. But yeah, you could use any size, even 512 would work if you got something that small. But yeah, you just need a SD card. Now there are ways to actually install everything all together. If you want to install the operating system onto the SD card, it's all a matter of how you're gonna partition everything. Uh, it's a little tricky, so that's why I decide to install it on something bigger like an SSD anyway. So to begin, I'm gonna plug in my USB. And here we have our USB and I do already have a partition that's already made. And I could just go into that open with file manager. And I already have the files in here already because this is the same boot media that I've tested on. But what we need to do is head over to downloads, uh, grab the UFI releases and I downloaded it quite a few times. Uh, I'll open the latest one. And all you need to do is just drag and drop this into your SD card. Now I'm gonna overwrite everything, which is fine. Apply to all, overwrite, and there we go. We have everything all set up on the boot disk. Now I could just remove this. Now I have my four gigabyte SD card all set up to boot in UEFI. Next, we're gonna take a USB, slap that into the computer as well. And then from here, you need to download yourself Etcher. So I have it over here as an app image. I'm just gonna open that up. File from Flash, which is the ISO that we downloaded. You see this Proxmox ARM64 ISO. Open that up. Select the target, which is our USB, which is a 16 gigabyte disk. 
select and then you could just flash it now i'm not going to flash it again because this is already pre-flashed but that's how you would do it with the uh, etcher once you're done with those two all you have to do is just start putting this together sd card into the sd card slot hard drive into any usb3 the boot disk into any usb2 for me and then this uses usb3 so i'm going to stick this into the usb3 as well and then now we have everything all set up for our first boot all right so here we are booting the raspberry pi 5 for the first time you could see and by hitting escape, it'll bring you to this menu where we get to choose our boot manager. And you can see everything It's 2.4 gigahertz, 8, 8 gigs of RAM, Raspberry Pi 5. Everything's working on the UFI boot. Go to boot manager and I want to boot from my U disk, which is my USB. And then from here, now I get my prompt. Like you would just install this like you normally would on any other server or any other desktop. So here we go. Actually on the Proxmox installer. And I could go to the bottom right, hit I agree. And if you're not familiar with what I'm using, I'm actually using something called Pi KVM, which allows me to remotely access the Raspberry Pi, like if I was sitting in front of it. All right, so here we can actually choose what disk we want. Again, there's like some partitioning things that you wanna do if you want to install it directly onto the SD card, but I don't recommend it. I'd rather just use the SSD. So in my case, I'm just gonna choose the SSD. You can go to options and then choose what kind of format. So if you got ZFS or better FS, whatever you wanna use, you can switch it. I'm just gonna keep on e ext4. I'm gonna hit next, go through the setup like you normally would on any Proxmox install. And then I'm just gonna go here for New York, English, next, password, email. Over here, I would just do mail at local, next. Go through this setup, uh, the IP address, what you want to call it. So pve.lan, I'm just going to call this pi5. So pve.pi5. Next, uh, verify all these settings and then hit install. This takes roughly about 10 minutes or so, or maybe even less. I don't even remember because I don't recall how long I just sat here. But yeah, that's all it is to setting it up. And then once you're done, you can just jump right into the dashboard and install your virtual machines and everything that you need. So here is a Proxmox already set up. I've been playing around with this for like a day or two. And I do have a few things hooked up. So I do have a, a Ubuntu container or LXC. And I also have a full VM of Fedora. Now we can't just automatically download the container images right off Proxmox. So we have to manually download them ourselves. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Now, first we head over to CT images, and this is where you would store the images. Now, I have a link down in the description below for uh, linuxcontainers.org, which I've used plenty of times, even in my uh, Proxmox series. And in here, you can actually download whatever you want. So I'm gonna head over, back over to images. And these are the images that are available, like BusyBox, Arch Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, Alpine, whatever you want. Uh, this is also where I got the OpenWRT. Now, say I do want to install Ubuntu, so I'm going to click on Ubuntu, go to the image that I want, say Jammy. You're going to choose the Arch that you're going to be using, which is ARM64. I'm going to go over to Default, and I'm going to choose the latest date, which is, well, yesterday. And now we could download this called rootfs tar.exe. All right, I'm not actually going to download it on this PC itself, so what I'm going to do is copy the link, head over to my Proxmox install, download from URL, paste this over here and then I just need to name the file. So I'm going to name this Ubuntu 22.04-new.tar.gxz. So remember the extension at the back and then hit download. It's going to grab that image, which is only about 104 megabytes, not large. And you can see now I have a new image called Ubuntu 22.04 or Jamie, uh, new.tar.xz. So I'm going to head over to create CT and I'm going to create something new. I'm just going to call this ubu-test and then I'm going to give it a password and another password and then I'm going to hit next and then in the templates you would choose the new one or any one that you download it. Next, the disk size. This one you could adjust whatever you want or to a different location if you want or if you have. CPU 1, memory half a gig is fine. Network, I'm going to choose DHCP. DNS, confirm, and then finish. And then from here, all you have to do is just wait until this says task OK, and then you get yourself your own new little container. And there we go. That only took about like 30 seconds or so. I'm gonna close this out. And now if I hit play on this, there we go. Root 
and then the password and we have our ubuntu 22.04 and this is freshly created so i could do app update and grab all the updates from here and it works just like you would like a normal linux operating system now as far as vms go we do need to do one little thing before we could actually install vms so from here we actually have to install this little package called pve edk firmware arch 64. so i could head back over to my proxmox head into shell and that's basically what i have to do apt install pve dash edk2 firmware dash aarch 64. now i already have this installed so if i hit enter it's going to be done with that installed now you can actually just install vms like you normally would so here i have fedora installed um, I do have something open, I think, and I have software open. Critical software needs to be installed. Let me open this menu, open software again. There you go. I have my own little thing. I have 64 updates on here. If I want to open, say, file manager, uh, I could open that as well. This is just like using a normal VM. And there we have our little files. Again, I only have, I think, one core with this. So it's not super fast, but you can give it more cores and more RAM and it'll run a lot smoother. But even for one core, it's able to run. As far as the operating system goes, there is one thing that doesn't work, which is this over here, the status menu. Um, it does load the information. So you can see this move around and this gets refreshed. But I think it gets stuck either on the kernel or the boot mode, or maybe it doesn't know what CPU and it gets stuck. So it stops loading here and it gets stuck like this forever. You could still see all this moves around and everything does work. It's just this status window doesn't want to work, but everything else does seem to work. And I'm able to still get updates if I want to. So if I hit updates and I go to refresh, hit okay, it will actually grab all the updates, put it into a list, and then I should be able to still upgrade this to the latest version. So if I close this out, scrolling down a bit, you could see, look, PVE manager. Again, grain of salt with this because I don't know where the sources are coming from. This at least allows me to test what I need to do on my ARM 64R on my Raspberry Pi 5. And it's been great so far. I don't see any issues with it other than that little system shell thing. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I had a lot of fun playing around with this. It's great that I could do something like this to expand the capabilities of Raspberry Pi 5. Instead of just doing mundane tasks with it, I could actually throw virtual machines on there or Linux containers and then build it out like I would on a normal server, which is really cool. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. Or if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.